obviously opened up Big 12 play. Uh, guys were excited to play. I thought we you know, made a nice run at the end of the first half to, to get ourselves back in position to be competitive. But, you know, just shot making continues to be an Achilles heel for us, and we got to figure out a way to do better there. So. Was that stretch at the end of the half kind of a glimpse of what you guys can be defensively? I, I think so. Um, we have elite ability on the defensive end um, because of the way we're structured between the length and versatility and ability to switch and protect the rim with, with, you know, with, the, with the size we have inside. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know if – any coach self team has ever gone nine minutes without scoring. I, you know, obviously he's been coaching a long time. Maybe it's happened before, but we got 17 straight stops at one point to finish the half. Um, with that being said, at home, if you get 17 straight stops, you probably should be up six, eight, ten points. <laughs> and uh, we just didn't make enough open shots. They made tough shots. We missed open shots, and that was the difference in the game today. How do you kind of capture that and put it all together? Just keep working. Just keep working at it. I mean, it's a long year. Um, and we talked about it coming into the game. It's it's conference play. You know, there's going to be moments where you're, you're riding high and you can't get so excited that you lose sight of the job at hand. And there are going to be times where you, you struggle and, and you can't ride those peaks and valleys. Um, you know, emotionally, you got to just kind of try to stay as much as you can in, in the middle of the road and do the next job the best you can. And so I think our guys just continue to work at it. I thought we ran better offense today. Uh, we worked the clock a little bit more. We got better shots late in the clock. And um, I think now with some more reps, some game experience, some opportunities to be out there with each other, that, that hopefully we'll be more efficient in terms of scoring in, in those situations. Ice pointed uh, to maturity as a difference in the second half. That, that's how he felt. What, what did you feel like was, was the case there? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's, that plays a part in it. And Ice has been around here a long time. Uh, he's been in these games before. He knows what it looks like. I think it was a six-point game with six minutes to go. Um, and it doesn't take long for a team like that to kind of create some, some separation. Um, miss a couple free throws. Give up a couple offensive rebounds, and, and then you, you know you got a double-digit deficit on your hands. So, um, I thought David McCormick's response to coming off the bench, you know, that's that's what a senior guy who knows his team's counting on him to achieve the type of goals that they have. I'm sure that's the type of response I'm, I'm sure Coach Self was going for, and that's why they're really good. It's why they're a team that probably can compete for a national championship. And I said it yesterday. I mean, we the, my first year we beat them twice. That team won the Big 12 regular season and the tournament and went to the Final Four. And I thought two years ago, before the pandemic shut down, that that team could have won the national championship. Um, I think this is the best team in terms of playing together, the pieces fitting that I've coached against in my head coaching time. Coach, when Isaac told us that going into the new year, it was his goal to be more aggressive on offense, and he had that career-high of shot attempts tonight. What do you think of him trying to take that step? Yeah, we need Ice to be aggressive. You know, I think sometimes he overthinks the way people guard him. They sag off some and try to force him to take jump shots. And, you know, there's really not a whole lot you can do when he's attacking in transition uh, or when he gets, a you know, an, an edge on you because he's got such a good body and he plays under control when he gets in the paint. Uh, so it was very pleasing to see him, you know, be more aggressive and take more opportunities looking for a shot uh, and now right we got to get guys when he kicks it out to be ready to step up and knock those down that'll create a little bit more dynamic effect for us. Coach, it? How, what did it feel like to have Musa back? How much did that help you guys? It was great. Um, obviously you see his presence. Um, it's part of the reason we, we thought he could have great value for us um, and again I mean you, know, you got to give credit to the other team. Dave McCormick made some tough shots over a guy with chest to chest with him with his hands up and um, but I thought Musa battled, and for a kid who's basically been gone from our team for you know the better part of three weeks, it was good to see his energy be right, um, his focus, and his his um, his understanding of where his greatest value is for us, is, and, and that's rebounding and, and blocking shots. Were there times you felt the the seventeen day break maybe fatigued you guys a little bit? It seemed like you kind of got started on the started a bit on your heels, and then towards the end it kind of seemed like you guys ran out again. Uh, you know, again, I I, I hope I've. Never given the impression I'm I come in here to make excuses. They they beat us. 
You know, we, we had ourselves in position to win a Big 12 game on our home court, and we didn't get the job done. Does the 17-day layoff have an effect? Maybe. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a six-point game with six minutes to go. we got to make plays at that point. And you guys have talked all season about you know going after the one crown you can go after this year. Does that make all of these games more and more important if you are going to achieve that goal? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. But, you know, it's a, it's a short memory league. <laughs> you know, uh, you get too caught up in trying to look too far down the road, you'll find yourself in, in real misery because um, the schedule never gets easier. Um, and so we got to focus on trying to get better when we come back to practice on Thursday. Anything else, Coach? Appreciate you guys. Thanks. So much. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> Was the game plan for you to be more aggressive tonight? You took a career high in field goal attempts. 15 is a career high? Uh, tied a career high. Like oh, uh, uh, not really. Uh, I just told myself, you know, really, we, you know, we had a long break off, and I told myself at New Year's, um, you know, I just got to be more aggressive for this team, honestly, just to put us in position to win games, especially playing in this Big 12. And, you know, it's my senior year, so it's kind of like it's my last time. So I got to be aggressive, you know. And not every night is going to be 15 attempts, you know. That's not me saying I'm just going to go out there and, and just try to shoot every shot that I can get. But, you know, I have to look to make plays for this team. Isaac, what was your approach when you were able to kickstart that run to end the first half? Um, repeat that question one more time for me. What was your approach? Just you were the one who was able to kickstart your goals. 14 to 0 ended up being 16 to 0 run. What, what was going through your mind? What do you think made you able to do that? Uh, we practiced those kind of moments, you know, um, as in not being down 14 points or anything like that, but we practiced adversity moments. You know, we play the game in practice, we play four minute intervals, you know, because it's four minute medias. So whenever we was down 14, we just, I just told the team, you know, they made their run. Now we got to respond. And, you know, we didn't have a 14 point play. We just said chip at it. You know, in five, in two minutes, let's come back here and let's be down, let's be down nine, let's be down eight. And then, you know, we just luckily was able to hit some shots and we tied it up at half. Is that end of the half, that stretch where they go over 20, um, is that a glimpse of kind of how good you guys really can be defensively and, and wreak havoc? Yeah, it really is. Uh, we just get dialed in uh, kind of later in games, and it just shows our potential. We have to be more dialed in at the beginning so we don't have to look for answers late in the game. That's where our problem is. So when we start off hot, then we just got to keep it going. We start off low, we got to get it moving. So we just got to get in the gym and figure that stuff out. What kind of triggers that? Like, what what flips the switch? It's just, it's just being down that much and un, like just once you're in a game you just feel like it's time to get stuff going and ice is one of our best leaders and one of our main leaders for surely uh he kick starts that so when he he got on us and he made it happen and we just followed behind him for either of you guys what do you think kind of made the difference after that spark carrying into the second half what do you think made things for kansas seem able to take the momentum back um. Yeah, you know, in all honesty, it was just it was a lack of maturity on our end. Um, you know, I was telling them right after the game. I said that's I said that's what makes the the KU's, the Baylor's, you know, the Gonzags. That's what makes those teams great. You know, they they're able to sustain to play well for 40 minutes. You know, um, we we started off the second half pretty good. You know, we we I believe it was up 36, 33 if I'm not mistaken, but it got to a point where they knew that they needed stops in order to win the game. They buckled down, they got stops. We didn't buckle down and get stops. And then they were just being players. They made a lot of shots and, you know, it shows. First half, they shot 26%. Second half, they shot 70%. That's like, that's that's unacceptable on our end, you know? Um, and then they, they, were just a, they were just a tougher team in the second half also. But you know, that's what comes with, that's why they're such a great program. You know, they know how to win, those guys know how to win. So credit to Coach Self and them. But um, I definitely think that was a game we should have won. So sure. Jordan talked to us eight days, or he said eight days before the game, there were only four guys available for practice. How do you think that factored into this game, you all just coming off, having to regain the in-depth? 
Um, me personally, I don't really just take too much thought into that. I don't really see it as no excuse because we were supposed to win this game. You know, we was in a position to win. So everybody else is having problems just like us. And so we just got to play through it. And that's, that's part of the game. And that's just the world that we're living in right now. Everybody has to find a way to win. After the only crown you can get, does that make all of these games more important? Yeah, we uh, uh, we think we we have our goal at the end of the season to be the Big Twelve uh, regular season champions. We it's, that uh, goal is still uh, in play. We just got to come back and handle business. We can't worry about anything else after that. We just got to take game after game after game. So this game is out the way. Can't worry about the next one. We got to worry about practice the next day. Having Musa back tonight, I know Kansas did its part at the end of the first half, missing their shots, but how much of an impact did he make inside, especially during that run? Um, Musa did big time for us. Uh, played 25 minutes, and he was plus seven. So, you know, Musa won the game. If you were talking about from an individual standpoint, he was real effective, um, was able to help on the glass. He made it tough for the, their players to make shots, you know, but... As a team, we can only ask Musa to do so much. You know, we got to help him in there from rebounding to when he do go up to block a shot, we got to, you know, rotate down backside to block out. So, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable efforts Musa give us, and especially in the mind frame that he's in right now. And so I just really commend him, and, you know, I'm proud of him. And that's just what we expect from day in, day out. Soldier. Right, Rondelli's on a bit of a tough stretch right now. Do you tell him anything, or are you confident he can work his way out of it? I just tell Dell to keep shooting. Um, a lot of a lot of the times, whenever you start to put pressure on a player about him playing bad or you know him not hitting shots or different things like that, that's whenever it starts to the pressure really just makes them cave in. Not everybody responds well to all that pressure, you know, because I bet he's hearing it from his family. He knows it himself. He's hearing it from the outside world, you know. Obviously, there's social media, different things like that. I just tell him just keep shooting, you know, and. Just go have fun. That's honestly what it is. Just go have fun. You know, I told him all that. Just stop overthinking it. Go have fun. And you know, he shot. He shot quality shots. He shot real good shots. So, you know, Delhi's being Dell. As long as he's just uh, rebounding and active on the defensive end, that's what we really need. And the shots gonna fall. Uh, you guys, what, what makes David McCormick so difficult to guard? He got a career high in rebounds today, but we've seen kind of what he can do. Uh, in, in this arena, in, in the Big 12, what makes him so difficult? It's just with him, he's, he's, uh, his size is there, so like it's more about positioning on him. And we're always a step behind on him. And that's all of our fault. It's not just our bigs, it's all of, all of our fault. We got to do a better job of being in the right positions on him, especially. Uh, we could take away half of those shots he gets, but we just got to follow the game plan a little better. Um, you ask me, it's just, it's just a, a great player being a great player. You know, uh, he has some tough fadeaways, some tough fadeaways, but then there's plays like the toughness plays where, you know, he's just getting offensive rebounds and putting them back up. Those are things that, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't happen that we can control. But, you know, whenever he's shooting fadeaways and different things like that, those are shots that we won. You know, he's just being a great player and he knocks them down. So, you know, great for him. But. I honestly, you know, not to take anything away from him or anything like that, I honestly feel like our bigs can guard him. But, you know, obviously I can't say that tonight because his numbers is high. So, you know, I just give him credit, but that's how I feel our bigs can guard him.